There have been some big updates in the initial days of the summit as well. There have been contributions and pledges to the loss and damage account as well. There have been updates on climate finance and India has contributed a lot to these uh, pledges and a lot of the updates that have come by. But what are the other big updates so far? We have a special guest joining us now, Lina Nandan, who is the Secretary, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Man, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. And it's a big summit and India is contributing and participating well in this one as well. But according to you, what have been some big takeaways from COP28 so far is more expected, something that India is specifically watching out for. So the most important thing to date is the operationalization of the loss and damage fund. That is something that we feel is extremely important because it had been discussed in Sharm El Sheikh last year. But until it actually came to some significant decision level this year, it would not really have gone forward in the manner that we expect because loss and damage is something that is very substantial for the entire action that we need to take for climate change. And that has been one of the biggest takeaways. As on date, there are some initial discussions that are happening around pledges around the global stock take. And we do expect that there would be very important discussions and deliberations that will actually uh, take forward this entire action into the aspects that India has been emphasizing, particularly how the global goal on adaptation is going to be met. So that is something that we expect would be enunciated with greater clarity in the days to come. Okay, yes, there are some days which are left as well. So a lot of action which is expected. Tripling of renewable energy, something that India proposed in G20, has now been taken forward by COP as well. What are India's plans here? Will the government push it via the public-private partnership model? Will there be more capex pushed the way we saw it in last budget as well? India has been at the forefront in phasing in renewables. In fact, uh, just to quote a figure, between 2017 and 2023, we added 100 gigawatt of installed electric capacity, of which 80% was from renewable sources. So certainly, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that there is this continuous and concerted push. And the result of that is for everyone to see what we had committed as part of our NDCs for 2030, that is 40% of installed electric capacity to be met from non-fossil fuel sources of energy. We've already achieved it much ahead of schedule. And as on date, we've achieved 43%. So there is so much that is happening in the country. The way that we expect the renewables to actually find more and more prominence in our energy mix is through a combination. So the approach is, on the one hand, the PLI scheme, which supports manufacturing, that is going to be private sector driven. And the generation is, of course, again, from private sector, but backed by the PPPs, PPAs for, with, the, with the regulators. And at the back of all of this is the CapEx through public funded transmission projects. And here also there would be a good combination of public and private sector participation. So it is a very robust approach, an integrated approach that has been brought into place. And that would achieve our uh, objective of phasing in renewables and bringing it to the center stage in meeting our energy needs. Okay, all right, take that point. Uh, you know, but where there are two things where India has not agreed. One is phasing out of coal and the health and climate declaration this time. What is the idea around these two issues? Is there a different approach that India is taking here? Would like to know that. As far as coal is concerned, I think India has made its uh, position very clear and it has articulated its approach several times across many discussions and negotiations. While, as I just mentioned, phasing in of renewables is happening in, happening at a very fast pace. At the same time, for energy security of the country, for predictability, stability and quality, the uh, dependence and the requirement of coal-based power is not going to reduce and not going to be less in the short run. So therefore, India, while it agrees that the phasing in of renewables is important, any singling out and, and especially saying that coal has to go and coal has to be phased out is not something that we are uh, 
uh, that we are in agreement with. And that is what we have been maintaining all along. So that is the approach as far as school is concerned. You also spoke about uh, some declarations on health that uh, we, uh, we, we had some uh, reservations about. Here we feel that health is actually an adaptation sector. The health of people in India and across the world is actually adversely impacted by climate change. So health needs a lot of adaptation support. Extreme weather events, whether it is heat or cold or vector-borne diseases, all of these are impacting people across the world. Therefore, when we look at health as a, as a emission-inducing sector, and when we say emissions on account of health systems and supply chains have to reduce, that is something that we are not at all in agreement with because our approach is that health is the problem of health is the consequence of climate change, not the other way around. So that is something that we have uh, articulated in our discussions and that is where the position is. Okay, the problem of health is a result of climate change. Point well taken. So, uh, you know, I wanted to understand if the contributions that we are seeing to loss and damage funds, uh, what is India's take here? Is it enough? Would we need more on climate finance? Would more discussions be required on technology transfer? Is there been any update on technology transfer as well? Because that is something which uh, Prime Minister Modi also spoke about in the initial days of COP. It is absolutely correct to say that technology transfer and climate finance are at the heart of all the actions that need to be taken for effectively addressing climate change. And that is why the stand of India has always been that when we talk about the new collective goal, the quantifiable goal, it of course includes the amounts that are going to be required for mitigation and adaptation. But it's also very important to see what is what are the means of implementation. And these means of implementation necessarily include both finance as well as technology. So technology transfer, technology co-development, access to technology is something that is very important and that is what we have been emphasizing. And that is what we will bring to the table in our discussions on finance and technology. And we're also saying that when we talk about means of implementation, what is going to be the finance flow? That has to also be not only discussed, but demystified. What is the nature of this finance flow? Concessional loan, grant-based. What are the mechanisms that are going to be put into place? All these have to actually be at the cornerstone of any effective strategy. So that is something that would be enunciated by us continuously during the discussions and del deliberations through COP. Okay, uh, that is very interesting. So last question before we let you go. Are we seeing um, a lot of uh, global investments coming in in the renewable space as well, be it climate tech, uh, be it the other renewable sources? What will the big focus be? It Will it be solar? Will it be wind? Will it be hydro? When it comes to the government attention or will it be a mix of all? It will be a mix. So renewables, actually, there are multiple sources of renewable power. And we do expect that with this great emphasis on, uh, on bringing renewables to the center stage as the primary source of energy, all manner of harnessing renewable sources of power will actually be discussed. And that is where the technology actually will play a, play a very important role. So I do think that these are very interesting times and th they will be very meaningful and impactful in COP and of course as a follow-up to COP in, in the form of specific projects and actions that would be taken by all stakeholders. As I mentioned, the renewable energy arena encompasses all stakeholders. So manufacturing, private sector investment into generation, public funded uh, uh, evacuation and transmission projects, all of them play a very important role. And that is the shape of discussions for all types of sources of power, be it solar, be it wind or any other forms of renewable energy. Okay, all right. Uh, Ms. Nandan, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us with all your insights, India's plans at COP and what India is planning in terms of climate action going ahead as well. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us today. Thank you. And with that, we'll uh, slip into a short break, but don't go anywhere. An interesting chat with UNDP India is lined up next.